Let's play a game of Letter Scramble. In this game, we will take turns picking from 10 words. Care, Doug, Or, Try, Beg, Don, Buy, Ten, Boat, and Any. The goal of this game is to capture three of the same letter. Immediately as that happens, the player who took that ward wins, and the other person loses, and the game terminates. For example, you might begin the game by selecting care. On my first move, I might take beg. You could follow by selecting boat. And if I am a good player, I would notice that you have an A in care and an A in boat. So I need to select any, otherwise you will be able to win on your next turn. You might respond by grabbing or, and again, I would notice that you have an R in care and an R in or, and so I would need to select try to block you from winning. But it turns out that you've actually outsmarted me here. You have an O in or and an O in boat, and consequently, you can grab Don and have three O's, thereby winning the game. Here's your puzzle for today. You go first. Can you find a way to guarantee the win? While you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today is to first figure out what you should never do, and then see if you can manipulate the rest of the game to figure out how to optimally strategize here. Are you ready for the solution? The first step is realizing that Doug is a worthless word. That's because each of the letters in Doug only appear twice in the game overall. There's a D in Don, a U in Buy, and a G in Beg. But D, U, and G don't appear anywhere else. As a consequence, selecting Doug will never get you closer to capturing three of the same letter. And as a result, that should be the very last word anyone ever selects. As such, we are going to pretend as though it doesn't exist. Now that we're down to just nine words to really think about, do you see how you should play this game? If not, let me pull back the curtain and give you a deeper hint. Do you see it now? When you rearrange the words like this, it becomes clear that the game that you're actually playing is tic-tac-toe. For example, the top row is the letter R, the middle row is the letter B, the bottom row is the letter N, the left column is the letter E, the middle column is the letter O, the right column is the letter Y, one diagonal is the letter A, and the other diagonal is the letter T. Those are the only letters that allow you to win, and this is the only way to configure those words into a 3 by 3 grid. Structuring things this way makes it easy to see how that example game played out. You began with care. I followed with beg. On your next turn, you played boat, thereby forcing me to select any. And after that, you effectively sealed the game by selecting or on your next turn. There was no play that I could make on my turn to win, and you were threatening to win on your next turn with both try and don. I selected try, and then sure enough, you won with Dawn. Going back to the original question, 
There is no way to guarantee the victory in this game. In fact, the only reason that you won in this particular example was because I misplayed by selecting beg on my first move. If I were playing optimally, I could have done something like select boat instead and made sure that I would have drawn the game out rather than conceding the victory to you. However, if you hand someone a list that looks like this, it is very difficult to tell that this is actually a game of tic-tac-toe. And as a result, you'll be able to sneak in a lot of wins against someone if you know the secret behind the game. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.